I'm Colton Demary and I do humorous and no ID. I'm going to do my humorous right now. Some people want to be astronauts or ballet dancers or plumbers. Milo Crinkley wanted to be perfect. It all began in the library. Milo was minding his own business, looking for a good scary <coughs> monster story to read, when a book tumbled from the top shelf and hit him on the head. The front cover screamed, be a perfect person in just three days. It didn't look like any monster story Milo had ever read. The author's picture was on the back. Dr. K. Pinkerton's silverfish did not look anything like Milo's idea of a doctor. He wore baggy zebra striped pants, a shirt with palm trees on it, a clown nose, a bow tie with half a bow, and a dented hat. If you had to pick someone to teach you how to be perfect, Dr. Silverfish would not be high on your list. Yet, somehow, Milo felt almost as though the book had jumped off the shelf, grabbed him, and hollered, read me. Besides, it was thin, so it probably wouldn't take much time to finish. <laughs> Everyone wants to be perfect at something, whether it's the athlete trying to win gold or break a record, the young lady vying for the crown in Miss America, or the student striving for all A's. There are self-help books that guide us in every aspect of our life. Dr. Silverfish offers his advice in Be a Perfect Person in Just Three Days by Stephen Maines. Let's see if Milo follows his advice and reaches perfection. Be a Perfect Person in Just Three Days by Stephen Maines. Do you know what you're thinking? You're thinking, how can a funny looking guy like this Dr. K. Pinkerton Silverfish teach me how to become perfect, right? Well, maybe I'm not as stupid as I look. I guessed what you're thinking, didn't I? This is the first lesson in perfection. Things, things are not always what they seem. You may turn the page. Now, I'm going to tell you what you need to do if perfect is what you want to be. It'll take exactly three days. Each evening, you'll read exactly what chapter of this book. And by the third day, you'll be perfect. But let me tell you something you'd better not try. What Whatever you do, do not read more than one chapter each evening. Many people are tempted to look at the last page before the third day is over. All I can say is, don't do it. <laughs> Milo suddenly had a terrible urge to flip to the last page of the book. <laughs> Dr. Silverfish glowered at him from the back cover, but Milo didn't care. He opened the back of the book and found the last page with writing on it. Boy, are you dumb? Didn't I tell you not to look at the last page of this book? <laughs> okay, I'll give you one more chance. When you're done reading this, shut the book. Some evening when you're serious about being perfect, open it to page 10. Now shut the book. Milo shut the book and took it home. After dinner, he went upstairs, sat at his desk, and opened the book. Now, when you're done reading this, Get a stalk of broccoli and tie a loop of string around the end. Leave it in your bedroom overnight. When you're all dressed in the morning, put the string around your neck and wear the broccoli like a necklace. And don't take it off until I tell you. <laughs> Milo obeyed. As you can imagine, the next day was rather embarrassing for Milo. He's the center of attention in every class. When the teachers asked why he was wearing a stalk of broccoli around his neck, he said, it was the doctor's orders, and yes, he had a horrible disease, and no, he didn't know what it was called, but it wasn't supposed to be contagious. That evening, he rushed upstairs, and he was almost afraid to open the book, but Dr. Silverfish seemed to be staring at him with a look that said, quit staring at me and open the book. <laughs> so Milo did. What are you doing standing there with a stalk of broccoli around your neck? Why, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Don't even think of turning the page until you take it off. Now that's better. Imagine coming to me, a famous doctor, with a stock of broccoli dangling in front of you. Why, you must have a lot of courage. Just think, you have nothing more to fear for the rest of your life. Even if you put your pants on backwards, you'll never look as stupid as you did a moment ago. <laughs> Congratulations, you have conquered fear. This is a very important step on the road to perfection. Now, for lesson two. From now until exactly this time tomorrow, 
I don't want you to eat. What do I mean? I mean no drink or eat, period. Not even boring foods like pepperoni and pineapple pizza. Nothing. Cheat on this one, and you'll never be perfect. Until, so until tomorrow, stay hungry. Milo looked at his watch. It read 6.52. How was he not supposed to eat until 6.52 the next day? It was impossible. Somehow he made it to the next day. The hands of his watch crept forward. 6.50, 6.51, 6.52. He grabbed the book and pawed it open. I'll bet you could eat a horse. Hungry? <laughs> Naturally. Please don't eat a horse. Anything else is okay. When you're done eating, turn the page. Milo stuck a baseball card in his book to mark his place and went downstairs. He made himself an excellent supper and ate enough for three boys. When he was finished, he went back upstairs, opened the book, and began reading. I'll bet that tasted good. And to top it off, you're more nearly perfect than ever. Perfect people don't eat very often. It gives them too many chances to dribble ketchup down that chain. <laughs> now, it is a well-known fact that it is, there is nothing more difficult than going without food for an entire day. So this proves you can do something because you want to. It's what we experts call willpower. This is a very important step on the road to perfection. Now, for your third lesson, I'm not going to ask you to do anything. Because I want you to do nothing. Sit, think, relax. Be like broccoli. P.S. <laughs> it is okay to go to the bathroom and sip weak tea slowly and breathe. Everything else is a no-no. It seemed pretty simple, but dumb. And Milo tried. He really tried, but it to something in the morning, his eyelids fell shut. When he woke the next morning, he felt sick. He would not made a perfection. He had fallen asleep. He would failed. He picked up the book. Dr. Silverfish seemed to be staring at with a look that said, well, quite frankly, he didn't do it. But. Congratulations, you're perfect. What more is there to say? And that's why some strange chance you did not follow my instructions exactly. In which case, turn the page. Congratulations, you're not perfect. It's ridiculous to want to be perfect anyways. Do you know what perfect is? Perfect is never doing anything wrong. So, perfect is never doing anything at all. Perfect is boring. So you're not perfect. I forgot the rest. <laughs> <laughs>